Welcome to the Red Light Report, your number one source for all things red light therapy, where you will learn how to optimize your health, wellness, and longevity with the power of photobiomodulation. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Belkowski. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Red Light Report. For the second time, I have two guests on at the same time. Nice. Uh, for those who are <laughs> longtime listeners, uh, it was about about a year ago in September that I had the biohacker babes on. So flash forward 11 months here in August, and I have two young gentlemen from Austin, Texas, Jonathan Mendoza, Baldo Garza. Nailed right. it. We'll get used to their voices here in a second. Uh, but they're again, they're from Austin in the biohacking sphere. They have their own wellness center. So first, we'll have them introduce themselves, and then we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what they do. It's very unique and interesting. Get into some biohacking, some red light therapy, of course, but Jonathan, let's start off with you. Give us your background, who you are, how and why you got to where you are today. Yeah, it's a great. I love that question. Most people know me as Nurse Doza. I am a nurse practitioner, a family nurse practitioner and a chiropractor. And I have a medical clinic here in Austin where I grew up. It is a wellness style vitamin lounge where we do vitamin IVs. We customize them based off lab work. And then uh, we like take health and wellness to a whole nother dimension. It's a cool vibe. It's a place where people who, you know, want to mingle with other people who like health, you know, and want to talk health. This is where they come to hang out. So I created this here with my best friend, Baldo. I've known since college. And we created this out of thin air, basically with scratch from the ground up, bootstrapped it, it startup mode. And we've been doing well since. So. We just had a consulting meeting, like little pre-meeting that we were kind of coaching some other health and wellness center. And one of the things that we said afterwards is like, what's kind of difficult because like we invented a lot of the way we do things and people come and keep trying to emulate it or, or copy it. But it's just, there's not like a set way to do it because we kind of just invented it. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. Expound on that a little bit, Baldo. What do you mean? Well, and so to get into like my story, I, I'm in sales. I used to sell Cutco knives for 14 years. And John and I are best friends since college. So, and I was a business major, international business major, and I've, I've been in sales all my life. And, and he was kind of going through a rough patch of trying to figure out how to fit like his genius in a sense, like figuring, like he always knew he could help people out. But he was stuck in a system where, well, I can't do it because X or Y, or they don't allow us to say that or, or, or whatever. So at some point, he kind of had a breakdown and and, and I was visiting and, and he kind of pitched this idea of like, what can we do on our own? And for me, I was like, well, I've never been in the insurance world and I don't even or in the in the in the wellness world, but but I'm sure we can figure it out because everything is figured outable. Once we started, every time that I had an idea, it was it was usually like, no, no, you can't say that or like, no, you can't do that. And so quickly I began to realize that to play in this world, it was really about like, please tell me all the things I can't do. Like, give me those barriers so that we can like get up to that limit and keep it unique. Right. As opposed to like, but th that's also why like most clinics and, and wellness centers feel the same because well, it works and it makes a lot of money. So why do it anything different? Well, we kind of went the opposite ways. Like, no, we want to make it different because that's the system we don't want to be in because it doesn't work. Well, so then what are the barriers that we can? So it was always like, well, I can't say that, but can I say this? Like, we can't do it this way, but can we do it that way? No, you can't do it that way. Well, what, what about this way? And usually if you'd looked up any research for me as a business person, it was like, well, this is how it's done. And I was like, well, I don't want to look at that. Keep telling me all the things I can do. I'm totally okay with hearing no all the time until I'm going to get that yes. Are all of those barriers related to insurance specifically or different laws or, or what is that in reference to? It's a little bit of all of it, right? It's laws. It's well, Insurance is a huge part because they will pay out only if certain if a practice practices a certain way or if there's a certain code involved or whatnot right and so we're cash based like we hardly ever take any any insurance and, and if anything there was a situation where where it was like but i don't understand why we can't do that if they're just going to pay us cash like if we don't have to rely on insurance then why couldn't we do it and so then we started hearing more yeses right because like well i guess if someone's going to pay you for it then you could do it but yeah like, i don't know how much you guys know <laughs> from my background but it's quite similar i'm a physical therapist by trade and graduated in 2016 took a job at a traditional allopathic you know outpatient clinic locally 
And uh, I left that job within, what, three or four months and started my own cash-based PT practice for probably a lot of the similar reasons in the sense that you're handcuffed by how insurances dictate your treatments. You know there's better treatments out there, but you can't utilize them because you're not going to get reimbursed for them, which is asinine if these other treatments that aren't getting reimbursed are more effective for the patient. So I got frustrated with the system, so to speak, probably in a lot of similar ways as Jonathan, especially if you were in the allopathic model and I know how that goes. So it's kind of interesting that we had similar paths in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I remember one time you you said something about like I know how to help them, but I'm supposed to be giving them this pill or whatever. And all they really need to do is drink more water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's such a simple answer, but I guess it doesn't make you any money if you if all yeah, you're doing big farmer was- doesn't make money <laughs> off water. Yeah. Yeah. And that I guess what's interesting is now so far along in my profession, I have a very different background, obviously, from a license standpoint. So it allows me to kind of see, you know, a big spectrum. And most people who don't do what they're supposed to do wind up paying for it. It really is the case. So it's talking and playing off what Balo said, my practice, and you know this as a clinician as well, will evolve based off of what you're seeing in front of you, the trends, what people are doing, their their tendencies, right? Their neural pathways, you know, that's it's also like what why do you do what you do? And then you see the bigger picture behind it and you're like, gosh, if it was just as simple as giving a pill to everyone, you know, obesity and heart disease and diabetes, Alzheimer's, it'd all be gone, right? And we all know there's no treatment for Alzheimer's yet and diabetes is preventable, you know? So it's it's incredible because you say, well, what does it take to get to there? It's not just taking a pill, right? Like we went so far as to say, let's just take all your vitamins that you need, which are really effective and just stick them in your vein through an IV and you'll get, you know, hundred percent absorption. And next thing you know, you're still like, but you still got to teach them how to sleep right and how to breathe right. And, you know, go outside and get some sunlight for crying out loud. Right. Yeah. Let's, let's backpedal for a second. A lot of good points there, Jonathan, but what is the name of your wellness center? When did you begin it? And what treatments and uh, services do you offer? And let's kind of dissect that. So our clinic is called MSW Lounge, and it is in Austin. It is a place where you can get a vitamin IV. You can get some lab work done to see hormones, inflammation, brain health. We even have a WAVI brain scan, which is like a, an EEG. It can measure you know, coherence and amplitude, velocity, and HRV. We, we love talking about wearable devices. I do chiropractic still. Uh, we do PRP as well, injections, which are great for sports injuries. And, and we're doing it for hair restoration as well. We have a supplement store. We have a vitamin bar, like an actual vitamin bar in our place. And of course, we have this podcast studio, which we're broadcasting from. So yeah. it's funny because when we were in college, we always wanted to have own a bar together. That was the idea. It was like, like a gonna, bar bar. Yeah. It was like, we're going to have bars, but then we don't. <laughs> I, I drink sometimes every once in a while. He doesn't drink whatsoever. And so, so we, we pretty much say we never really drink. And so whenever this idea came up, it's like, well, we're not really going to own a bar anymore, but then we just made it a, we made it a vitamin bar. So that was one of the first things that we decided like, look, it's going to feel like a bar, except that everything you order is good for you as opposed to like some poison or whatever. And I mean, we literally started in a, in a little broom closet that was 111 square feet. That was like a shape of a triangle. And I was making drinks like literally on the floor while he was like having a, a consult with someone until we outgrew that. Like, pretty quickly, but we did that. <laughs> that, was, that was 2017. Yeah, We we technically started in 2016. Uh, we kind of partnered up with this other group that had a wellness spot and it wasn't working out. We said, we're going to go off on our own. And so when we did, we found this broom closet literally in this yoga studio from where we're at now down the street. And it was a little hundred square foot place. We killed it, man. It was awesome. We packed that thing so much every day. The yoga studio kind of wanted us out because, you know, people were walking in on Savasana wanting IVs and we played house music in the background off this little sound bar that we had in there. So, you know, we like to have fun. And so when we moved off to the side down the road in 2017, even just a few months down after that, we had enough money because we bootstrapped it. We, we basically had enough money to find this other spot and uh, we built out a little bit of what we could. And then we went from that and then we remodeled it and took over some space next door, which was pretty cool. But we kind of looked at the idea of like, all right, we're going to start small, know what we can do and grow. But what was crazy about this too, is that most people don't know this either. The backstory of that was Baldo. Can I tell the story? Sure. So Baldo 
uh, lived with me and my family when we first started off this business in 2016. And when we, when I convinced him to have this idea about this vitamin bar, he, you know, he's in Houston at the time. So he had to get everything up from Houston and come and move over to Austin. And because I really couldn't afford a lot, you know, to pay him. So I was like, Hey, you know, what do you need? We talked about rent. We negotiated rent. We talked about what can we do to get by and like, we made it work. And so like looking at what it took as a partnership, a friendship on the line, like, I mean, we lived together for crying out loud. We shared, the, we, we shared the same car for three years. You know, he didn't have a car for three years, honestly. And so we worked the same place. You know, it's like, why? what's the point, right? And we hustled every day to like basically make a name for ourselves there. And so what happened was we built this clinic and it's kind of a unique spot. It, it's it's beautiful. And it's a it's a place of, of, of health. Anytime you come there, the idea was that, you know, if you go to a bar, you want to hang out, watch the game. But like, if you like health, you're not just going to hang out at the gym all day. Like, where else are you going to go? You're going to come here. Yep. That's yeah. basically what it, what it came down. And so we always have house music going on. So it's, it's vibey. Like, I mean, especially during uh, during like COVID and all that. It was it was great because people would just come to hang out. It's like, well, there's nowhere else to go. So we're just going to come and hang out. And people would just like chill and just like talk about whatever the hell. Sometimes they wouldn't get IVs. They were just they were just hanging out like yeah. literally just hanging out ordering drinks because it's <laughs> it's a community that that's what it is it's it's you the second you walk in you feel that welcome vibe i mean we give hugs even during those times the last couple of years we were giving the biggest hugs because people needed them right and then we would go because we're science nerds and go look up hugs increase your immune system by 30 percent. so it's like i want to give 20 hugs today you know like i mean it's yeah. going to be better for me you know but yeah that's that's the vibe that we have and, and health has been fun for us and and we meet really great people like you and we do great things like using biolite like i i see yours back there i i have the black one that uh, me and my wife use every day and it's part of what you know kind of keeps us together it's part of the routine right I mean, that's one heck of an entrepreneurial story. I mean, that's like a classic grind it out, like you're saying, bootstrapping it. I mean, that was the same with BioLite. I was a PT, like I told you guys, trying to find my own niche treatments. And I became an expert in dry needling and cupping and blood flow restriction training and uh, hyperbaric. And that's how I came upon red light therapy. And it started as quite truly a hobby at first. I was still treating patients full time in my practice, but it became a point where BioLite started becoming more and more, it was growing, let's say. And so it's taking more time and energy and it's gotten to the point where now I don't treat anymore and it's full-time BioLite. So not as intense as you guys. I mean, a lot of sacrifices, right? And obviously I had to make sacrifices when I started my PT practice. That was bootstrap too. So it's inspiring to hear other stories like you guys, how you do have to make sacrifices in order to see, you know, that growth and that success in the long term. So, you know, congrats to you guys for making it happen. Let's go because i know one of your uh, hot topics is vitamins and i also want to kind of just mention to the uh to the audience because we talked about this before we started recording jonathan that you're able to do these ivs and offer these relatively like prp injections relatively unique medical treatments because you're a nurse practitioner it's not just like you know jack and jane off the street can start their own similar clinic i mean you have to have a medical background correct of course of course yeah and that's uh that's really interesting because it is all medical when you come in because you know we're dealing with medical services here which is really fascinating but we don't want to really make it look like a medical clinic but to come in you know like i i can prescribe that's the difference between a nurse and a nurse practitioner right so that's a huge difference when it comes to the setup of one of these things gotcha yep good clarification there so let's move forward with the vitamin side of things i know you guys are very passionate and experts in that area so Let's dive down the vitamin rabbit hole, why they're so important, how you offer them, what kind of results you've seen. Let's just kind of talk about that for now. So vitamins are our biochemistry for the science people out there. That means that you function better with vitamins. And what we've learned are there's many different types of vitamins. It's kind of a general term, but you have supplements, for example, that you've heard of. These are containing vitamins, minerals, things like antioxidants and amino acids. Okay. For the most part. Now you've heard about things like spices and herbs and even mushrooms now that are thrown into supplements and the supplement game is, is, is very vast. So when you talk about it, what you're trying to really get into is vitamins are, you're born with the need for those. You're born with the need for minerals. You're born with the need for antioxidants and amino acids. So from our standpoint, if you're missing one, if you're deficient in one of those, then your body will not function as well. 
And when you say function, you know, I think performance and performance for anyone can look like, you know, I can think better at work. I have more energy throughout the day. I can complete my workouts, you know, really well. And then, of course, you know, the weekends are great for me. This is kind of what we based our ideology now on the idea that it's function and performance. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and vitamins are a key element of that overall picture. Yeah, I've always looked at it almost in the sense that any action that happens in your body, I mean, even from blinking of an eye to like your hair growing to, you know, sleep, maybe melatonin, it, it takes a biochemical reaction. But if you don't have one of those chemicals available for whatever reason, then there's going to be less of those reactions to create any action in, in your body. So, so that's kind of like our game is like, well, let's figure out what you know chemicals or what nutrients are missing so that we can supplement those so that we can so that way you have what you need to create the biochemical reactions that you that you will need to function normally right yeah. basically right and then you can get into genetics and all that stuff but that's i mean but it, at the same time it, it still goes back to like genetics might say that you won't absorb some things or or you might absorb too much of those things but it's still the same game like you have either enough or not enough chemicals to create biochemical reactions is the way that i've always looked at it yeah yeah and what's interesting about those biochemical reactions we keep referring to it's it's a metabolism that's what it is your metabolic reaction in the body which is your overall function from a chemical standpoint you're regulating blood glucose and carbohydrates you know you're looking at triglyceride intake and uh, you know the liver is involved with you know circulating detoxifying blood and and you're responding to pathogens all the time there's bacteria and viruses all the time right and so what we look at let's just take vitamin d for example vitamin d should be viewed as your immune system and what we've learned over especially the last couple of years is that a lot of people are deficient in vitamin d so if they're deficient in vitamin d you think okay what's their immune system look like well you know what it looks like and if you have to test in the labs to show someone how bad it really is that's what we have to do sometimes but then it, it's a different kind of mentality because when you're talking vitamins it, it's almost like they're so foundational. We almost take it for granted how important they really are. But because the food we eat does not contain the nutrients we need them to contain, then we become deficient without us knowing it. And so, for example, a person who eats all their food through Uber Eats or Favor or gets it all delivered to them, most likely is processed food. Those foods products probably don't contain a lot of nutrients, let alone vitamin D, because where are you going to get vitamin D from usually? the sun. And if they're ordering in, they're not going out. <laughs> so th that's the problem, right? So then you say, okay, I'm going to test your levels and I'm going to show you this key element that you need in order to strengthen your immune system and fight off whatever you're going to encounter. You're low in it. And this is one of those things that you just take because you will function better with it. Boom, vitamin D, right? And what's incredible is it took a pandemic to get everyone to understand that vitamin D was that important to them. How ironic that we were quarantined inside, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, the irony behind it. But if you take it a step further, people were told to take vitamin C. Well, vitamin C is great. Now, what's incredible about vitamin C is that there's a high potential for it to have a whole nother therapeutic benefit in higher doses. Now, when you take oral vitamin C, usually the best form is something called liposomal. And the reason why is because you can absorb it more easily than you can orally because vitamin C is very thick and it's acidic. So it's very hard to digest. If you take two or three grams, that's usually as much as you can take as much at one time. But then if you take any more, you are definitely going to have GI issues. And so most people won't do that. But when you do it through an IV, now you have a higher dose opportunity to where you can do like 10 grams, 15 grams. And I can tell you right now, go look up what 15 grams of it will do to someone. I mean, you're talking about cleaning house, you know what I mean? And it is very therapeutic in that sense. And it's just vitamin C. But from our family practice th that we have here at MSW Lounge, if we get vitamin C, what we've seen in uh, cardiology is that it helps with the support and the collagen of the arteries. Because if there's damage to those arteries due to plaque and cardiovascular disease and all that, vitamin C is there to help support it. And they're seeing, you know, how beneficial it's essential at this point, right? And you're able to do that 10 to 15 grams, like you're saying, because you're bypassing the GI system. So you're not getting that distress, which is, I guess, the common or I guess rate limiting factor when taking it orally, correct? That's yeah. that's exactly right. Yeah. There's a really brilliant man named Linus Pauling. He's 
talked about doing high dose vitamin C for years. And it's been done for so many types of therapies and you can go do your research and see what it's applied to. But, you know, that's just kind of still just the start. If you expand on the vitamins, for example, let's take vitamin B5. Okay. It's my favorite vitamin. Now that's Baldo's favorite vitamin. So when we first started doing this, working together, he was my guinea pig. So what was cool about it is I'm going to say, I'm going to try this on you. Tell me what you notice. So we used to give him B5, vitamin B5, in the form of dexpanthenol. And he would be giggling like through the IV or afterwards. And yeah. he'd get like real super chill. And I was like, that's interesting. Let me give it to someone else. And they would get super chill, sometimes giggle, sometimes just be like really relaxed. And after it happened over and over and over again, you go and you keep looking. And I was like, I think this is what it does. I think it kind of activates the support of the adrenals, which indirectly activates parasympathetic response. What's and B5 so, called? Well, in supplement form, it'll be pantholinic acid. Mm. Then in the IV form, it'll be dexpanthenol. Gotcha. If you give a good amount, you can cause someone to chill the F out, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it's really interesting. Like, the question when someone comes in is, uh, is how do you want to feel? Because most of the time you walk into a clinic or you walk into an IV place, even like there's plenty of IV places around, right? And and, and they're like, well, here's your menu, right? And then you pick something or or they ask you like, what's wrong with you? And, and, and then they kind of assess and they recommend something. Well, we approach it by like, we have health tenders, like the people behind our behind our bar are not bartenders, they're health tenders. And so our favorite question is like, how do you want to feel? And they're like, well, I want to feel good. Or I want to like, I kind of just want to chill right now. Or like, I have a big case on Monday. And so this weekend, I just want to like be able to focus and like really study. Sweet. So how are you feeling right now? And it's like, well, this is how I feel now. So we need to get you from here to there. All right, cool. Let's do it. Right, and then and then we kind of play around with with the vitamins to 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 create the proper reaction that 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 they want, and so that's so much fun. Yeah, I mean, when we first started, that was like the most beautiful thing that we could do because like there was definitely a, a while before like I knew what was going on as far as like oh I can recommend this or that, but that phase where I was like, so do you think we can give them this or that, and like it'll it'll do that? It's like ah, uh, you're probably better if you do this and this and that. I was like, all right, cool. And so that learning phase was was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's because when you change someone's energy, and you know this, going into a little bit of vibrational talk, it's not the easiest thing to do. So a lot of times this instant gratification of a world that we live in means that someone who needs energy doesn't need to be bouncing off the walls. They need to relax and they need to sit down and just kind of recalibrate. And it gives them a chance to activate parts of their brain, maybe even their body that they would not normally use. And, you know, they walk away feeling different and it has this chemical reaction where you're like, huh, let me explore more of what this means. And so when we started seeing that, we started really going into the labs more. And what's great about laboratory work is that it's raw data, right? It's, it's, it's your own personal data. It's objective. It's unbiased. And, and when you look at that lab work, you can apply the vitamins and the supplements in the same light. And now you're changing, you're moving numbers around, like you see markers moving. And it's really incredible because like I said, all you're doing is addressing the dysfunctions within the chemistry pathways that are going on throughout your body, right? Blood work is essentially like a diagnostic scan of your car or your body. So when you can see the transmission, the engine, the brakes, you can see which pathways off, then you say, okay, well down this checkpoint over here, you should be going left and you're going right. Well, if we give you what you're missing, you'll start going right. And that's it. And all of a sudden you start seeing in people, they're like, oh, that's what they needed, right? So when you get to that customization standpoint, you're saying, what does the individual need, right? Because maybe doesn't everyone doesn't need B5. B6 is another one, if, if you don't mind me just speaking on it real quick. So anemia is usually talked about with like iron. And now sometimes people understand that there's pernicious anemia like B12, which also can sometimes be nine deficiency as well. And if you think about someone who has B6 deficiency or anemia, this person has a lot of mood issues because vitamin B6 is a cofactor in the production of all your neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, melatonin, GABA, acetylcholine. You have all the need for B6. And if you're deficient in a B vitamin like B6, imagine that person walks around with a different type of anemia. You might call it depression. I might call it anxiety. I might call it schizophrenia, bipolar, Alzheimer's, right? Or just this person is just moody 
And so when you give them B6, all of a sudden the lights come on again because you have more neurotransmitter production. They walk around with that. You don't think that person's going to think differently? They'll attend meetings differently. They'll show up to their kids, you know, soccer games differently. They'll show up with their spouse differently. And now they'll say, okay, I got this different kind of energy. It feels better than all the caffeine and, you know, energy drinks I was drinking before. It's it's sustainable. And what is B6 again? So B6 is peroxidine. Mm. The, the best form of it, if you're if you're really wanting to dig into the weeds, there's there's definitely a difference. B6 is active form is called P5P, and it's a big acronym, peroxidal 5 phosphate. And that is the form that you want in your supplements. So when you go to the back of the supplement, you see the nutritional fact label, it'll say in parentheses, peroxidal 5 phosphate or P5P. Then you're like, oh, that's got to be it. So I suggest take that on a consistent basis to see what it feels like, because after a while, if you need it, and you'll know. <laughs> right. Yeah. The cool thing about B vitamins is that they're water soluble, right? And it's 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 water soluble because what uh, the other thing that people don't understand as well, when you're looking at the labs, the, there's ways to see if you're B6 deficient, not just seeing B6 deficiency by itself, but then seeing how that affects the rest of the body. And when you take that and you measure that, yes, your levels are going up, you know, you got to see like, okay, there has to be a response because if it's a water soluble issue, maybe someone who's anemic needs a higher demand of it. Right. And then if you think about all the digestive issues people have, plus the nutrients they're not getting from their food. And then you think like, okay, plus some people genetically need the active form of B6 in order to function better. Right. So there's all these variables. And so what I've learned is this, you give people what they really need, the exact thing of what they need and they function better. So giving someone P5P in an IV is a game changer. Let's just be real. That's that's what it is. So when do you decide to take a panel? Someone walks off the street for the first time and it sounds like they can walk to the bar and basically say what they want or like how they want to feel. And based on that, something will be developed or created. But at what point do you kind of, like you said, analyze what they're truly deficient in and then address it that way? Is there a time and place where they can say they want that? Or is there like something going on where you've seen them a couple of times and you notice that there may be something that could be ameliorated by, you know, addressing certain vitamins or minerals? Whenever we look at the labs and the IVs, there's this beautiful blend of science that gets to elevate the function of the individual, right? The understanding comes from vitamins are just the step towards what pathway you really want to activate. So for example, let's say I want to activate more serotonin. If I get there, there's a recipe to get there. And what I can see with lab work is the byproducts of those recipes and pathways working better. So if I say, what's a good example, let's look at the adrenals. The adrenal glands are a hormone factory. All right. They make a bunch of hormones, cortisol, which is our stress hormone. They make adrenaline, you know, which everyone knows and they even make some sex hormones and some other things. But there's a feedback system between the brain and the adrenals, and it's called the HPA access. And what happens is when you activate this access, it gets on a feedback loop that's just continuous. The more stress on the body, the more this access is activated and utilized. When the body can downregulate it, it doesn't have to use this access or pathway as much anymore. And now you're not having the need to produce as much things like a stress hormone, cortisol, or adrenaline. Your body's not in flight or fight mode. So what's interesting is if I see that the person's deficient in vitamin B6, and then I go think, okay, well, they're probably deficient in B6. Once I give that to them, what happens? I'll get personal feedback. Baldo will get personal feedback. People will say, I feel the difference. But when you go in the lab work, you want to see how it's directly affecting the adrenal glands right? And you want to see if that has changed at all. So what's incredible about it is the vitamins and the amino acids, antioxidants and combinations will move those other markers in ways that affect things like hormone production. And that's a biochemical reaction, which most people don't take account for. And so from that standpoint, you could say, okay, we've tested and looked at things like when you supplement support for the adrenals, they work better. And you can look at it in the lab work. And that that's that's what we're applying it towards. That, that's a good answer. That was very comprehensive, Jonathan. I guess just to reiterate it, when my question was more so, when do you decide to get their labs? We offer that to everyone, right? Like some people are here just for an IV or just because they heard they felt great. Or like my friend said that they got an IV and they felt great. Like that's what I'm here for, right? And then while they're sitting there, 
they they start to look around like what else do you guys do and they're like well do you think that if i were to get blood work like you would find out why you know whatever like and then they and they said well maybe like we can start there right and so then that's what happens but the difference is that whenever you go to a allopathic doctor they they assess you they get blood work and then they recommend meds right some sort of like you're going to get on this pill or on that pill we kind of just say like you're going to come in for an iv once a week and we're going to address exactly the same way that we would address it with meds but with vitamins we can try to address lifestyle like hey you should probably eat these things or those things but that's that's a difficult change right sometimes it's not but a lot of times it's like we'll I have to change everything i do well, if the only thing you change is showing up here once a week, you're going to get the nutrients that you want. And sometimes that works, right? Because like, if you're getting the nutrients that you want, your body's asking for less. Like yeah. your body's not constantly hungry, you know, asking for like, I still don't, I'm still not getting the nutrients that I want. I'm still hungry. But if you already have them, then that might happen less just, just in itself. So when you think about from that approach, if somebody wants to do a preventative method, that's what, you know, allopathic will call it. That's a person that goes out of their way to initiate wanting to get labs. A person can do that anytime they want. And a lot of times that's how people come in. Usually people don't wait till where they're sick before they want to start doing something about their health. But sometimes when they do get sick, that's when they start thinking about it and say, okay, maybe I should probably start looking at the idea. I've been sick a couple of times over the last couple of years. I've had COVID a couple of times, you know, like I just, I, I can't seem to shake it. Like, you know, something's up, you know, do I need to figure out there's something else going on? And most people, when they get labs, like I said, it's, it's, this is for them. This is their data. You know, they don't need permission from anyone else to figure out what's going on with their own body, right? Insurance, you talk about that red tape earlier, insurance will tell you whether or not they'll pay for those labs, but I'm like, it's your body. If you want to go out of your way to test your testosterone and you're a 30 year old guy, you, by all means, you can go check on your own. You don't have to wait till you're 50 to, for insurance to pay for it. If it is looking at that approach you say, okay, well, if you know, then you don't guess. All right. And that's what I really think is important with blood work. Labs are probably what we're actually known for. The IVs, you know, we added that. When I started off, even before Baldo and I started working together, I did lab work. I've done lab work longer than I've done IVs. I've done lab work for almost like 10 years. And what I've learned and studied is the hormones, the inflammation markers, how everything's in balance. And it's not like, I just give you testosterone and everything works out. That, that's If that was the simple thing, then you say, well, why did they have low testosterone to begin with, yeah. right? So we say, okay, what if a guy comes in and says, I don't want to take injections. What if I want to boost it naturally? Can you help me? I say, yeah. What does that look like? That's not just here, take this. Good luck. With low testosterone and things like that, there are ways to support a healthy metabolism that allows the body to start making that back on its own again. And that's what we really learned is that the vitamins are just supplemental, which they're they really tools. are cool. They're just tools that basically are added into the overall regimen of a person's ability to function better. Yeah. And the better they understand that, whether it is through labs, finding out exactly you know what nutrients they're missing and how it affects their overall health, it's on them to make the change they want when they want to make it. Cause if they wait too long, we know what that looks like. And, you know, a lot of times that health conversation comes down really to not them getting an IV. It comes down like, I want to do my labs. I want to see what's going on. I want to see what I've been doing. I've tried this and do this. I'm worried about this. Let's see what's up. Yeah. Well, I think that with insurance, it's always like they need a diagnosis, right? They need to know that something's wrong and, yeah. and then they'll pay for it. For us, it's like, the only thing we need to know is that you want to feel better. And, and it could be that you're already fine. You just don't want to feel better like because we have plenty of people at our clinic that, that are here for optimizing. It's like, I, I'm doing all the right things. Like, you know, I'm doing the ice baths. I'm doing the bio light. I'm doing like all this stuff. Like, but I still want to see my markers. Cause I still want to like, I want to get faster. Like I want to live longer. And so that's cool to get into that. Right. Because I think that that's probably like if we have anything, like we have people that have been to every doctor, tried everything, nothing has worked, and they finally came to us. And there's the people that, like I'm doing all the things, but I want to, I want to go to the next level. Yeah. And then there's everything in between. But those are the two that we kind of deal with the most for sure. 
Did you guys know that it's teeth whitening season? Well heck, isn't it always teeth whitening season? Who doesn't want to have the whitest, brightest smile in the room? And not just that, but also receive the benefits of red light therapy for the oral cavity at the same time. My company, BioLight, just released our newest product called the Guardian Plus, which implements both blue light for the teeth whitening aspect, but also the red and near infrared light for the red light therapy aspect for your oral cavity. We're all familiar with blue light for the teeth whitening aspect, but did you know the blue light therapy is also beneficial for selectively killing harmful bacteria, leaving the beneficial bacteria thriving and well, and blue light therapy is also good for gum health and tooth sensitivity. And of course we know the laundry list of things that red light therapy does for the oral cavity, such as gum health and gum pain, infections and inflammation, wound healing, gingivitis, or mucositis, so on and so forth. So with the Guardian Plus, you get the best of both worlds. Whiten your teeth and improve the health of your oral microbiome. So to kind of play on that too, Mike, what's interesting is let's talk vitamins again. Let's talk about NAD. Let's talk about NAD. It, it's incredible. We So we do lots of NAD and AD Plus here in the clinic in IV form. I'll do it even intermuscular as well. It's great. It gives you a great rush. Uh, Baldi used to do it before he go for his runs. It's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty great. But NAD is incredible because it's a vitamin derivative. It's a derivative of vitamin B3, niacin, right? That's what the N stands for. And when you give NAD plus to someone, what NAD plus is, it's a vitamin derivative that goes to support your mitochondria, which everyone knows is the powerhouse of your ATP production. As you age, you decrease in ATP production. And as you age, you decrease in NAD production as well. You need NAD supplementation or at least a higher production as you age. Taking NAD in the IV form is a great way to do it. But what we notice is this. When you get in an IV, you can feel it. You probably had this feeling too. I haven't had had an IV yet. Okay, perfect. For for the listeners, then you'll love this. NAD plus literally goes into a dysfunctional mitochondrial cell, whether that be in the brain, the liver, the adrenals, or the heart. In fact, the heart uses more NAD than any other organ in the body. So you imagine if you have NAD go into that mitochondria, NAD breathes life into that mitochondria that's dysfunctional, almost like CPR, and it brings it back to life. While you're getting the NAD IV, you can feel that happening in real time. So people will sometimes say, I feel it in my gut. I have nausea. Sometimes people who had you know rotator cuff injuries, they feel in their shoulder. Because it goes wherever the body needs it to go, right? In an IV, it's flowing through the blood. The body just knows. Kind of like stem cells, right? Yeah, stem cells, same deal, right? And PRP, same deal. Like all, the body just knows, right? Like you, you promote autophagy, right? Is what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to clean the cells out. The body just knows what to do. You just give it what it needs in order to do it, whether it be a fasting protocol that allows the body to heal on its own or the ability to get NAD IVs that stimulate, you know, mitochondrial rejuvenation. And what you do is you stack it in a way to where if the person is healthy, they can optimize by supporting your mitochondria, whether it's, you know, NAD IVs, BioLite. We even talked about the resveratrol cream that, you know, from Young Goose uh, that I'm taking with the BioLite. And all of that is supporting mitochondrial stimulation and health. And we've learned in the vitamin world, the supplement world, the biochemistry world, oncology, you name it. That it comes to mitochondrial dysfunction that is basically the definition of aging or chronic disease. And what we're all after is mitochondrial support, whether you want to call it, you know, heart support or not, right? So when you do something like NAD, what we've done because we're different, we do it on a maintenance program. A lot of people will do it. And we first learned about it for addiction protocols. They'd go high dose and then they would do like, you know, four or five IVs within a couple of weeks to detox. Well, That's a long time to be sitting there for four or five hours for some people going through that misery. And some people don't want to do it that way. But for the addiction protocols, it works. Other people would say, well, I don't really, you know, have addiction issues and I want to, you know, just kind of clean things up. You know, what could I do? You can go to what your body needs and your body will know, right? You could start slow and work your way up, which I think is the best way for anyone, including Anyone who wants to consider like a high dose vitamin C, know what your body knows. Don't go with someone said on a podcast, go with what you know. And if you don't know, go get labs done, right? And say, like, can I handle this? Can I do this? What do my liver and kidneys look like? You know, you know, and by the way, you know, what does my heart look like? From that standpoint, the vitamins are the introduction sometimes to people to have that bigger, you know, conversation. 
you briefly touched on it and maybe this is it but if someone comes in and they're savvy you know biohacker longevity type of mindset and they request some sort of like mitochondrial stack what would that look like it happens all the time they're like i heard this on the podcast and we're gonna do that and i was you know we're like yeah i mean we can we can but i don't know if you want to <laughs> so this is what i would do i would go high dose uh, alpha lipoic acid alpha lipoic acid is great for the mitochondria it activates a, an enzyme called amp k which i'm sure you know about and you talked about we love amp k amp k will promote longevity amp k will promote mitochondrial rejuvenation and biogenesis but it's hard to activate unhealthy people don't really do it and disease does not activate this so when you do alpha lipoic acid high dose you want to make sure you're in a healthier state to basically get the benefit and that's really the honest truth because once you start doing it, your mitochondria has the ability to rejuvenate on its own and make new mitochondria if it's past the point of chronic illness and disease and inflammation. If you're living in any type of inflammation, you cannot optimize. You cannot promote autophagy, for example, right? Just think intermittent fasting, for example. Mm -hmm. it, it comes down to high dose alpha lipoic acid in the right sense with some carnitine, which may or may not burn going in. I'm just letting you know, you can get the carnitine as an intermuscular injection, which is just fine. But quarantine is really, it's great. I think it's harder to find nowadays, actually, because it's, it's, prescription. it's prescription strength now. So we have prescription. Are, are these all IVs? Yes, these are all IVs. So when you talk about the supplement thing, we don't have, we have the B vitamin section. Then we have, you know, the amino acid section. Then you have like the antioxidant section. So, you know, when somebody comes in and they want, you know, mitochondrial support, you can get an intermuscular CoQ10 shot. Okay. Which is great because... The CoQ10 is another supplement that basically supports the mitochondria. And if you imagine you're doing several things like that, and you maybe even want to decide you want to take it up a notch and fast while you're coming in, Baldo will do that. I used to do like a three-day fast and then come in and, and break it with an IV or like, with like a mitochondria rejuvenation IV. And then I, and then I eat. <laughs> yeah. Pretty wild. What does that feel like after fasting? amazing that <laughs> it doesn't feel any different i mean i'm also used to it and i'll also do like a higher dose of nad than most people but but i you know i've kind of built up to that like if someone came in from scratch it's like well first of all you probably shouldn't do a three day followed by an iv it, it could be too acidic sometimes depending on what's in there but 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 that's one of those things that you work up to it i've been doing this what for two and a half years now three years now yeah but you're also doing it because you're detoxing all the stuff that you just released from all your cells Correct. so that's another topic but like you have to understand that when you detox you have to you have to get all that stuff out of your system if yeah. people did have an activated detox pathway to begin with they wouldn't have this problem yeah. you know like so it's 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 very careful that when you understand chemistry there's an action and a reaction there's always going to be oxidants and the need for antioxidants your body just has to produce a constant supply yeah. right to keep up with stress and demands so but, but it doesn't like feel a certain way like it i mean there's nothing crazy about it. other it, than the nap that's whether you're fasted or not fasted you might feel a little bit of a rush now i'll, I'll bring up a point going back to the lab since we're on the topic of mitochondria we love to do our own research Baldo and I'm both between us uh, have done lab work every year for, I don't know, the past seven years. I've had, you know, 14, 15 rounds of labs. And what we really like to do is play around with the timing of it, right? Because just doing it every once in a while is routine. You should get your lab work done once or twice a year, depending on what your body needs are. But for us, we can do it a couple times a year, more than that, just depending on what we're trying to do. So a couple of years ago, when Baldo introduced me to fasting, I decided for me, I was going to do a six-day water fast. And for people at home, just not for everyone, please consult with your healthcare practitioner and all the waiver disclaimer. But you know, I was ready for it. So um, I did a six day fast, but the thing is I did my blood work before and after. And what was fascinating is you could totally see the difference. My cholesterol was elevated at the end of the six day fast. You know, you could totally see all the total cholesterol and uh, all the markers for lipids were elevated. My uh, testosterone plummeted. It dropped like 500 points, wow. you know, because my reserves, I guess, are going to other places. But one thing that was fascinating too, besides all oh, my blood sugar was super low, uh, my A1C changed, it dropped two tenths of a point. And that keep in mind is your blood sugar measurement over 90 days. So to drop two tenths of a point in six days is pretty outstanding. But we measured my CoQ10 in the six day fast, the CoQ10 increased after the six day fast. Yeah. So my body was able to produce more CoQ10 in a fasted autophagy state. Yeah. 
Is that so, ketones being more efficient or like helping with that in some facet? You know, I I would love to say I know exactly what it is, but I imagine that the ketones, if I'm just throwing this out there to think it off the off the fly, the ketones are part of the activation of you utilizing liposis, which is basically fat for burning energy. This is the point of ketosis. But for ketones, I have to imagine you get to a certain point where your pH has to be balanced, right? Because you don't want to be too acidic and fall into ketoacidosis. So autophagy is, is this catch-22. If you're hydrated enough because you've been drinking enough and possibly even having sparkling water because there's some minerals in it, then you're okay with the acidity. And breath work helps you with that as well. But there's a certain point with ketones that you're burning that fuel for energy and you're so clear thinking that you're like, I don't care that I'm not hungry or I mean that I am hungry and I have these hunger pains is the fact that you can function yeah. because when you are not in ketosis, you don't function. You can't think you're running off of blood sugar. It's a fast burning, you know, crappy energy. But I have to imagine if you're burning ketones for energy, you have reached into the another gear of metabolism. And now what you're doing is if you unlock potential, I have to imagine maybe amp K was activated. Yep. So that's that's what I really look at with the CoQ10. It's not that I made more. It's that those pathways like amp K going towards mitochondrial health was stimulated. I didn't even know our bodies could do that. Like by doing a fast that you were going to make more CoQ10, yep. right? So your body just knows how to do that. So imagine the nutrition, for example, taught us a whole new thing after these labs. Because I say, what is really nutrition other than the nutrients you need in order to function? It could be the vitamins you get through an IV, and you don't even need to eat food sometimes to get them because you don't get them in food anyway. But then you say, what's the overall picture again? Mitochondrial health. So if I'm stimulating the support of mitochondrial support, you know, then what does it look like? It's a bunch of things that get to the end result. I have to clean up that damage until the point of no return. And once you get to that no return again, you've unlocked, you know, AMP-K. You've uh, made a very healthy EONS system, right? Nitric oxide synthase, mm -hmm. right? That's balance. Your sirtuins. Mm -hmm. And here's what's interesting too. Most people say, oh, you know, NAD's great for sirtuins. Yeah, sirtuin one, which is your nucleus. Okay. So yeah. imagine that NAD is great, not only for your mitochondria support, but it's also uh, supporting your nucleus, which makes your DNA. So, I mean, you really have to look at the overall picture. And it's not just like a one fixed thing. Like I said, if you get the alpha lipoic acid with the NAD, now you're sitting on top of the world. Get your CoQ10 shot with it. And then NAC was another one that we... Oh, yeah. So to go back to the detox for the people who are probably wanting to know, if you're doing this and you're doing a fast, you have to detox and get rid of all the toxins that you had stored up in those fat cells, in your liver, uh, even in your brain, because that's what also you're going to do with autophagy. You clean out your brain. The liver is what's going to get rid of all those things. And when you look at the IV, alpha lipoic acid stimulates the production of glutathione from the liver. Um, alpha lipoic acid is a great way to do it, but NAC, N acetylcysteine, another amino acid, is a much better way to do it. So if somebody came in and wanted to detox before the fast or even after the fast, I'd say you could do a NAC IV, clean everything out in your system, right? Glutathione, if you want to go to a certain extent, because somebody cannot make glutathione, you could give them a glutathione IV, clean everything out, including the brain. And it's this reset where you flush it out, you pee, poop it, sweat it out. And then now you're not holding on to those things that could cause issues down the road. Now you can optimize. And what's fascinating when people work out, they say, you know, yeah, I'm doing keto. I'm doing paleo. I'm vegan. I'm working out six days a week. I'm optimized. If you're biohacking, how healthy of a lifestyle do you really have if you're trying to cheat your way into better sleep? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's that's really what we're looking at is how do I get the best sleep possible, the best poops possible, the yeah. best nutrients in my body to function? How can I move around, get some sunlight, and then I need more hugs? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah. what we name this episode is hugs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hugs for health. Um, hugs for health. Let's move along to light for a moment here. Uh, you did briefly mention using you know, your BioLite Shine or Red Light Therapy, and of course, the sunshine as your natural form. Do you guys use red light therapy at MSW Lounge? We have a floating bio light, and it's a panel. The, it's a panel. The, the bigger panels, yeah, yeah. in front of it, and and I think we also use the small one, like whenever we can't get the veins, like whenever their veins don't pop up, too. Like the the mm. nurses will like, nah. kind of shine it on. And yeah, I've heard, I've heard of that. Yeah, we used to do that. It was really great because you know with IVs, 
sometimes people don't have great veins. <laughs> and uh, what was incredible, we heard about it that they said, yeah, if you put the infrared light up there, it expands the veins and you have better circulation, of course, right? Makes sense. So I said, okay, let's see it. So we were doing it and we're like sold. Like we can use that for all these people's little veins and all that. And it works well. But what I've really been fascinated with is I've loved uh, infrared light for forever. It's hard to find good quality infrared products. And what I really like BioLight about is I love the handheld device. The panel is great. When people get IVs, they're literally sitting next to a panel, like just right there and they're getting it. They come in for it as part of the experience. Yeah. Well, you, you know? guys also provided one couple for our festival with the Elias right. came by and, and, and we had those floating around. People were just like sitting around chatting, having the bio. It was great. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's perfect because you're sitting there for an IV, you know, that takes about 60 minutes or an hour. So you're like, yeah, put that on. And it was great. There was like four people who basically sat around the light and all got kind of, you know, get the light therapy. And then, you know, as far as like me personally, what I've noticed with the handheld one, I've been doing it originally for my eyesight, but I was noticing how it was helping my skin. I think it has helped my eyesight as well. Now, obviously, I don't know how to prove this just yet because I'm wearing glasses still, right? But I noticed I did it every day for like several weeks, which probably is not even approved, you know, to do it this way. But <laughs> I did it and took a bunch of fish oil capsules because we're vitamin guys, right? And I noticed that my eyesight did get better. But then somebody noticed something with my skin. And I started using the Young Goose stuff. And then I met the owner of Young Goose. I'm a Tay. Tay. I'm a Tay, dude. He's he's incredible. He's a brilliant, brilliant guy. And he said there's a whole protocol for red light therapy and uh, the skin cream that they use. I just found that fascinating. So yeah, I'm a big believer in it. Uh, I do infrared sauna when I can, but we found out that not all the saunas really truly have infrared. Well, so what do they have instead? They just have well, red they lights. Have like a red light. They have red light. But a red light isn't infrared. I know. So when they say, when people just refer to infrared, I'm like, you got to understand there's this wavelength thing to it. But when you have the infrared saunas, then they put it, uh, we mix with like EMFs. And like a big like pad, iPad or something in there with a screen. And I'm like, nope. I just um, I don't. Care. So that's always funny to me, right? Because because it's like, oh, watch Netflix in there. Like, well, that's the whole point of not like exactly. well, 20 minutes of well, that's chill the fuck out. That's how I kind of look at it. So if you're getting rid of this, you know, people are like on their phone, right? Or you know, while they're getting like infrared light therapy. So it doesn't make much sense to like watch TV and have you know my eyes open while I'm like also getting like red light therapy on like my leg or something, because I'm like, you're still defeating the purpose because you're getting a different wavelength that's, you know, negating some of the benefits you're getting from this other wavelength. Ever since I started even doing the red light therapy, I've tried to minimize the lights, the artificial lights mm -hmm. in my life, because I know I don't do bio light at night. Like I'm not going to do that to my face at night. I'm sure it's going to keep me up. I'm sure it probably releases something, you know, maybe, maybe a little adrenaline. I don't know. Maybe you could tell red me light, red and near infrared light. Yeah especially red light, is the only visible wavelength that doesn't inhibit melatonin production. Whereas all other do, like green and blue and yellow, but yep. red doesn't. As far as other chemical reactions, I'm not sure. Some people just in general get energized by red light therapy because, of course, you're boosting mitochondrial ATP production. Some people get really relaxed by red light therapy. So I always tell people, you just need, you just need to figure out how you respond to red light therapy. And if you're someone who gets you know relatively energized, then don't do red light therapy within an hour or two. If you yep. get relaxed, by all means, do it. So I think it's just kind of on a person to person basis. Gotcha. Okay. So then I have a question since we're on the subject. Whenever I turn on the handheld one and it goes to the one that isn't as bright, yep. The next one, when you, when you click that button to the left again, that one goes minimal. And then if you click it one more time, they all go brighter. Right. Okay. What's the difference between that, that one and then the one that goes brighter? So this yeah. one's near infrared because near infrared is invisible. Right. Yeah. So that's why I was saying with uh, infrared saunas, if they're if they're integrating red light and calling that infrared, that's literally incorrect. Near infrared's invisible. That's all red light. So red light is red light. Red light is visible. You know what I mean? Like it's the color red. When we go to half and half here for people watching on YouTube, that means two rows are emitting red light. Two rows are emitting near infrared. So you're getting that combo. Red only treats the skin near infrared penetrates deeper so it treats everything deeper than the skin so it's like if you're trying to treat the brain or the heart or like muscles and joints and you're using just red light well you're not doing much you're just treating the skin does that make sense yes so if you're treating the brain 
you want all near infrared because red light's not going to penetrate deep enough to get your brain. That's awesome. Okay. That's where I was going with that. That's interesting. For that type of approach there, where would you place for brain health? Would you put it to the front of the head? Would you put it to the side of the head? Does it matter? Yeah. So it depends on what you're going for. Is it for headaches, migraines? Is it for cognitive performance? Is it for anxiety, stress, depression? For a majority of them, you're going to attack that frontal lobe. So if we're talking cognitive performance and or anxiety, depression, stress, you're going to use the near infrared only. And if you have the shine, it's not plugged into electricity. So there's literally zero EMFs. And I would put this straight on my forehead. I'd do about five minutes on my right lobe, five minutes on my left lobe. And I'm going to be feeling pretty good because you're going to cause vasodilation. So you're going to improve circulation, get oxygen, nutrients to the brain. And to your point, help get the garbage and the, the toxins out, so to speak. And of course, you're going to probably help augment mitochondrial function. And of course, that comes with a lot of perks. If it's migraines or headaches, then it depends on where they are. Because of course, there's all different types. You can have them just above your eyebrow. You can have them along your temple. You can have that ram's horn pattern, which is more of the upper trap. So you'd actually want to irradiate your upper traps because neurologically it refers here. Uh, a lot of people, of course, who sit a lot or uh, have terrible posture, they're going to have suboccipital tension. So you're going to want to use the near infrared right at the base of the skull to help loosen up those muscles, which neurologically is going to reduce the tension on your skull. So there is some strategy, but for mental health in general or cognitive performance, it is right to the frontal lobe of your brain. That's great. Nice. That's great. I mean, I, I love the biohacker world in a sense that you're always learning more about how to improve function and performance. I've incorporated the BioLite, and then at the time of the festival as well, we met BioStrap, and uh, I've been using BioStrap every night now for the last, I guess, year, maybe almost, to measure my HRV and my deep sleep patterns, and uh, it's really incredible because it's data. It's just like the lab work, right? I think that's where biohackers love us because it's like, this is data. Like, this is, it's telling me what I'm doing, what I'm not doing right, and then we can troubleshoot it, right? Because Baldo and business always taught me there's always an answer. So, you know, in biochemistry, there really is. That's one thing we've learned. You can apply what we've talked about this whole time to anything in health and, and disease as well, because you say, okay, well, what's the problem? You're like, well, it's inflammation. Yeah. And you're like, really? It's inflammation? It's like, yeah. And what, what's inflammation doing in the body? It's destroying cells. Which cells? Well, go over there and find out. But really, you say, well, what's the main cause of all this? And it's stress. Well, stress is constant. We've learned this by now. You cannot avoid stress. So when people come in, say they're run down and they know it's stress that's causing the issue, I'm like, that's that's not an excuse. Like, stress is always there. you got to respond better. So if you respond better, you're less likely going to have inflammation. What you do to reduce inflammation is everything. And there's many tools we talked about plenty here, you know, which is incredible, yeah. actually, but it, it it works. It works. I mean, we're living proof of it. We feel incredible um, on my journey personally, and Baldo can say it too. This was trying to get us healthy too, because I was pre-diabetic before all this and maybe close to diabetic. Baldo, you know, he, at one point he was 60 pounds heavier. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. so, you know, this is no joke. This was also to say, hey, I, I, we got to, we got to practice what we preach here. And we've been doing this and we feel great. We feel incredible. We've been able to think clearly and have tons of energy and just a two darn horn. The weekly IVs, if it's feasible for y'all listening out there, game changer. I mean, just hands down. There's there's no going back now. You've been doing it for what, a year and a half now? At least two years? Yeah, two years now. Yeah. When I saw him starting to do weekly IVs, I was like, that's it. I'm done. You know, I'm going to do it every week. And then boom. And we've measured it in the labs. It works. You know, it does. It, 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 you wonder like how long it stays in your body. Weekly IVs are going to stick. Like, yeah, weekly IVs are going to stick. Monthly, maybe not. You might not be able to get everything you need, especially with like the water soluble vitamins. You're probably going to be able to need some, some help to take home. But yeah, for the most part, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do just to take your health and performance up to another notch. So for those listeners across the country who aren't local to Austin, are all NAD or glutathione or all these, you know, IV centers, so to speak, are they all created equal or are there ways or things you should look for or assess before pulling the trigger at a particular location or center, if that makes sense? Like, how, how do you, you know, decide if this place is a good place to get, you know, my IVs or not? I think that if you call and ask for certain vitamins, for certain nutrients, 
and they have them, then then you can kind of tell that that's a good center, like a good place. Because a lot of, a lot of IV places, they literally have what they need for to help someone recover from like a hangover, right? And and then they have maybe a couple of variations of that. But if you call them and ask them specifically, like, do you carry NAC, you know, or you know, or even just do you carry NAD? Some a lot or of alpha lipoic acid or alpha lipoic acid, then you kind of know that they might know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, even glutathione, sometimes you can't find it in some places, right? Because yeah. it's, it's just one of those things that like a lot of, I mean, a lot of places are are kind of catering to the people that need recovery from like hangovers. Right. It, and that makes enough money. Like that makes plenty of money for a business. And so it's a certain thing that they just order from a, from a pharmacy and they just put it in a bag and that's it. So there's no scientists there there's no there's no practitioner they're really like trying to say like hey we're going to put a little bit of this and a little bit of that to address anything and so that's that's probably another question you can have is like do you guys like you know customize or do you guys do blood work along with your with your ivs and that's a good way to, to kind of assess a, a place first and then you can always just go on our website and shoot us a message and, and we might be able to answer your questions yeah you know what's interesting is we do a lot of telemedicine the pandemic just amplified it right because everyone is now wanting to do zoom calls for everything we can do labs if somebody wants to start that way and what's fascinating is because of you know the the pandemic people were calling and saying hey you know like what do you recommend for this and you know i got to get in shape and i got to do this what do you recommend for this we have a supplement company and what's cool about it is the supplements are great and (laughs) we use those in the labs too because when people say, well, I don't like needles, right? Like then it's like, it changes everything. We found that out too. People don't like needles, right? So it was enough to get them to do the blood work, but then they're like, okay, I'm not coming in every week for an IV. I'm just not going to do that. You know, I almost passed out there in the blood jaw. So they're like, give me something I can take it home. And so we look at the convenience side of it. We have this really cool thing called uh, dailies. Uh, we have a supplement company called MSW Nutrition. And on there, on the website, you can go to, and there's a box of supplements that have a 30-day supply of a vitamin packet. And in that packet, you can it's put what, whatever you need. Like you want a vitamin D, you want something for adrenals, uh, alpha lipoic acid. Yeah, so usually a, a, a client anywhere in the U.S. can go to our, our website, let's say MSW Lounge or MSW Nutrition, and set up for like a 15-minute intro call with John. We order blood work, all that get the results have another call with the, these people and then we'll we'll re- recommend either like here's supplements or or if they want to be more specific it's like let's make some dailies for you and then that way with these dailies we're going to address anything that's deficient from your blood work and we'll create a protocol and maybe and maybe every six months we check in and again but they get it delivered to their house and, and every day they just grab one little packet and that's their daily vitamins. Sometimes it's like three per day, right? Cause it's sometimes it's like, take these in the morning, take this in the evening and they're split into like an AM pack, PM pack kind of deal. So we do that for yeah. people all the time. It may seem like a sales pitch and a plug, but the crazy thing is I, there's so many supplement companies out there. I know people have really good supplements out there and we've tried being in the supplement game and the vitamin game. We get to try all kinds of supplements. It's yeah. great. You know, everyone's given us some too. You know, in that sense, you know, you can get them anywhere. But the reason I like ours is because we use them in our labs, right? Like if someone's coming in and I'm like, okay, I can check to see what the alpha lipoic acid does here. And I can see what your adrenals are doing. I can see how it's affecting your inflammation, right? And if it's not working, guess what? We change and we put different supplements in there that will affect it. And that's where it comes down to like, I guess the unique part about us is we know what we're doing. And there's a lot of great practitioners out there to do too. And so when you work with those people and things get more customized and personalized that's when people get really good results and and it can't be a blanketed approach where you just go somewhere down the street like oh they gave me some hangover iv but i didn't go in hungover so whatever it's like or it's like why take you know this collagen powder but you know i don't really notice anything and you know i'm like okay i mean you take a nootropic you notice something right everyone's looking for nootropics i mean we got something like that too but when you take certain things you want to know it's working Right. So either you're going to say, I can feel the difference or I'm looking in my labs and I can see it's working. So that's another thing I think that's really cool about us. Yeah. That's definitely one of my, it is my number one criticism of people taking supplements and throwing the whole kitchen sink at themselves is you read about something or you hear about something and it might be the hot new supplement of the week or month um, and you take it, but you never check to see if it's working. Rarely do you feel like if I'm taking astaxanthin or if I'm taking, you know, different types of, mushrooms for our immune system, you know, building up that resilience. 
I'm just hoping it works. Unless yeah. I'm checking my labs, I don't know if it is. And I think 99% of the people are doing that. You hear about something, uh, you read about something, and all of a sudden your supplement list gets built up to 10 or 12 or 15 or 20 plus. And again, you're just hoping it works. It's You're spending a lot of money and it's all in the name of health, but you really don't know if it's working unless you have the objective data. Yeah. Um, you might feel good. It could be a placebo effect and there's nothing wrong with the placebo effect if it's for, for the positive. And it's working. <laughs> right. <laughs> But again, you know, back to the point here, if you're not checking to see if a certain supplement or adjuvant is working, then you could be wasting a lot of money. So I really appreciate your uh, kind of concierge way of providing supplements or assigning supplements to people. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. And then there's another aspect of like just the supplement game in general is that there's also different types of supplements, right? Like we, I can speak to B12 because that's an easy one, right? Like there's, there's like cyanocobalamin, there's methylcobalamin, there's uh, what, what other forms of adenocobalamin, hydroxycobalamin. hydroxycobalamin. And so there's so many different forms of it in our bodies, our biochemistry reactions, like we have a methylation cycle. So it would only make sense that if you take a methylated vitamin like a methyl b12 that's what probably would work for you as opposed to like a cyanocobalamin could be made from like a cyanide molecule and that's probably not as good for you right and so and then and that goes into so many different ways but and i think the majority of b12 is is like cyanocobalamin out in the market and a lot of people can't do much with it because it's a it's something that the body just does not recognize. Well, that's the same, and and that's probably an analogy that a lot of people have heard. That's the same for every single type of like the B sixes and the B eights and the and the they all have different forms that you can create a molecule that looks like it and call it that certain thing. And so that's also a big part of it. And it's like you know, please test that it is working or it isn't working, and also check what versions of them are. are. And you can easily Google that. Like that's an easy like, hey, what kind of what form of B six is something that most people can do that, and it'll it'll tell you P five P. Magnesium is another one where there's so many varieties, and like you need the one that best suits your biology and physiology, or else you could just be not happy with the results or just not getting any results. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that, like you said, Baldo, it extends to all vitamins, all those different variations, and you, you got to know which one works best for you. Yeah, correct. Yeah, and, and yeah, correct. And, and, and it's just a matter of, and honestly, the best thing you can do is just like do a quick little search. Like I said, come come to us. We'll, we'll send us a message on our on our website. We like to answer that. We have we usually have like a saved response with a lot of these. That it's like, oh, that question has come in so many times. So it's not like it's bothering us, right? Like, but if you're like, hey, I definitely want to have a deeper conversation, then yeah, of course, set up a, a more of a console. But easy question is we do those all day long. Gotcha. What is the website for people to go check out, you know, the services and supplements you offer and like to reach out if they have questions? So for supplements, you want to do idovitamins.com. I do vitamins dot com and then for like consults and 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 just the lounge in general it's msw lounge.com yeah if you really want to do the labs go to msw lounge.com there's a way to get it done we can sign up and we can talk about it cool right. maybe last question here because we talked about this before we started recording maybe some talk on frequency and resonance for healing like do you guys utilize some of that at the lounge or just on yourselves personally? And if so, what have you noticed? Just in general, from, from a frequency standpoint, I speak about it all the time, just from like, from a meditation standpoint. And, and, but if you, if you're talking about more from tech, I mean, sound beds are always fantastic, right? And we love music here. That's part of the reason, but, but just from a frequency standpoint is like every, every energetic output that we have has a different has a different frequency so the idea is is that how do we speak or how do we influence that through anything that we do to create frequencies that are more conducive to a happy state or to a productive state or to a focused state but nothing specific that we do here in the lounge as far as that other than that we do do the brain scans to see where people are at with their brain waves i'm actually going to say the music is one of the most important things here at the lounge yeah we play house music all the time and it's not your techno i'm talking like the house is chill it's relaxed you know like it's good vibes right because you set the ambiance you know no matter where that person's at with their frequency walking in we got to set the right radio station for them right so now they can get locked in to a different frequency that raises their vibration so even the design of our layout hits on those as well and so just being in the room here at the lounge like you just 
people feel better automatically. They walk in, they always say it. They're just like, I just love coming here because <laughs> I just love the vibe. And I'm like, to me, that's one of the best things you could ever offer someone. Now, personally, one of the things that I've tried before, uh, there's two things I recommend. One, chanting, deep chants, bass chants, like all that. And of course, the music I talked about before, but there's this uh, instrument where our friends have from a source well float center source float well in midland texas they have a, a thing called a lucia light and i don't know if you ever heard this but it's essentially a halogen flickering light bulb that mimics the wavelength of the sunlight and what you can set it on is gamma you now you can set on theta you can set all kinds of different frequencies and it has different therapeutic benefits it's almost like having a psychoactive experience without taking anything and you see different pixels and colors and it's really just the most fascinating thing I've ever experienced, to be honest with you. And it's not for everyone. It's definitely incredible. And so they at the festival all the time. The science behind it is it, it decalcifies the pineal gland. Hmm. And, and this this machine was awarded a two million dollar grant in Alzheimer's research because of this. And if you talk about the frequency of it, it's like, well, you know, maybe this machine can do that, but you know, wavelengths have the ability to recalibrate the body into a healing mechanism, a healing state of being, homeostasis, homesis, whatever you want to call it. I mean, even the frequency of going outside and sitting under a tree and meditating, just grounding alone would, is probably what I'd leave everyone with is this. Try to ground or sit on the ground, you know, and sit still as long as you can. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, do it longer <laughs> and keep practicing until you get it right. That was good frequency healing. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Well, guys, I think we covered a lot of great stuff, a lot of uh, deep insight into vitamins. So I appreciate that. And some a deep dive into your location. After hearing all of this today, like you said, clearly unique and, and one of a kind. And I see why people would try to copycat you, so to speak. You got something good going on. So lastly, I know we covered the website and stuff, but if you just want to, uh, again, for the audience, tell them where they can go to learn more about and from you guys whether it's personal or or business pages go to mswlounge.com for the clinic for nutrition and supplements go to idovitamins.com follow us on any of those handles and then just on a side note we have this really cool health festival that we throw every year and uh, we have video speakers that goes on in december we always have good informative talks from all those speakers that we post about as well so you can follow us on that handle that that was uh, at how do you health there's a website how do you health.com and that's what the name of the festival is as well too we do it a little different you know so like people go to conferences all the time but same thing we do it a little different because yeah we bring in the speakers and they they do the presentations and then and you can go see the vendors and go do the things but but we provide time for each you know we don't the, our our guests don't have to choose like well do i want to do this or do i want to do that no, we all do all the things together. We all do the studying, all the, the the talks together. We all do the vendors time together. We all do the workouts together. We're we're bringing in light installations. We we have different rooms for like sound beds and for you know we talked with the bio lights last year. Like we're gonna have a VIP room that's gonna have some special services as well too. But but it, it's it's a lot of fun and it, it's 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 all about play. Like we we're gonna have music and our Friday nights and Saturday nights are have become famous now because. Friday nights is all psychedelic education and, and Saturday nights is all sex and relationships. And throughout the day, there's a bunch of other things that, that lead up to that, but it's, a, it's two fun nights or it's three fun days, two fun nights, but it's how do you health and, and we'll make a code for BioLite, get a discount. It'll, we'll just make it BioLite on all the platforms. We can do it on idovitamins.com, use BioLite, get a nice little discount. Same thing with the festival. Use BioLite, get a nice little discount yeah. for tickets. Last but not least, our podcast, if he didn't mention it, How Do You Health is our podcast. Go listen. Gotcha. Yeah, we'll put all of that information in the in the show notes so people can easily click and go check it out. So appreciate you guys again. For Baldo Garza, Jonathan Mendoza, this is Dr. Mike Belkowski signing off another episode of the Red Light Report. You guys have a fantastic week. You too, buddy. Appreciate you, it, Mike. Man. Yeah, you bet. Thank you for listening to the Red Light Report. If you like what you heard today, go ahead and leave us a review on iTunes and other podcast platforms to help spread the word so other people can learn about the many health, wellness, and longevity benefits of red light therapy. 
If you're looking for more educational content, check out our Instagram page at biolite.shop and our YouTube channel, Biolite. I'm Dr. Mike Belkowski, and I'll see you on the next episode.